God bless you, and thank you for joining me for today's installment of Midday Manna. Today, I want to share a word with you, and it's coming from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 28, and I want to read from verse 1 to verse 6. I'm going to read the King James Version. It says, and when they were escaped, they that knew the that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen, or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. The word of God from Acts chapter 28, verses 1 through 6. I, I want to talk about shaking off the snakes. Shaking off the snakes. There's one thing we find from the word of God is that Paul was a faithful witness to the life-changing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. From the day Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus until he gave his life for the Lord in Rome, Paul was a mighty preacher of the gospel of God's grace. But in this passage, we find Paul on his way to Rome to stand trial before Caesar. Paul would spend years as a prisoner in Rome, and he would eventually lay down his life as a faithful martyr for the Lord Jesus in Rome. The chapter before this one, chapter 27 of Acts, 
Paul and his companions were caught up in a terrible storm. Everyone on the ship thought they were going to die. Everyone, that is, except for Paul. The Lord had sent an angel to comfort Paul and to tell him that the shipwreck would not lead to his life being taken. The ship would be lost, but the lives of those on the ship would be spared. According to chapter 27, verses 22 to 25, the ship was lost in the storm, but all those on board made it safely ashore, according to Acts 27, 41 through 44. Paul and his shipmates came to this island called Melita. The little island is located in the Mediterranean Sea, somewhere between Sicily and Africa. Today, that island is called Malta. When the survivors landed on the island, they are met by some, some natives that were very friendly. Verse 2 tells us that the inhabitants of Melita were quick to offer aid and comfort to Paul and the others in total about 276 of them. Paul is helping to gather wood for the fire. As he laid his bundle of sticks on the flame, a viper comes out out of the wood and bites Paul, hanging on to his hand. Apparently, the snake was lethargic due to the cold and the rain, but it quickly revived when it was cast into the fire. Paul shook the snake off and the, and the people waited to see what would happen. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you have been shaking off snakes and people are waiting to see what will happen. I don't know who I'm talking to today. You've been faithful, but you have been faithful through the cold and the rain. And even in the midst of your faithfulness, not only have you found friendly people to offer you help and support, but every once in a while, there's a snake in the wood pile. I'm not talking to anybody today that has faced a real trial because you have been bitten by a snake. And God, in his mercy, fulfilled a promise that was made in Mark chapter 16 and verse 18. And Paul's life was speared. While the viper was a problem, Paul faced some more deadly snakes that night. Snakes that had the power to ruin his life and to end his ministry. He shook off every single one of those snakes. I want to point out to you this afternoon that the snakes Paul faced on Melita that night are some of the very snakes that you and I face in our daily walk with God. I want to encourage you, though, that as you sojourn on your way from where you are to where God wants you to be, there are going to be some snakes that latch on to your life. But this afternoon, the word of the Lord is, shake off the snakes. Three quick points and then I'm going to close. Point number one is, shake off the snake of crisis. The snake of crisis. You find that in verse number three of Acts 28, when Paul was bitten, it was a moment of real crisis. The snake was poisonous and could have claimed his life. And of course, we know God took care of the poison, but here's the problem. The crisis came when Paul was engaged in doing good. After that episode on the ship, 
where everyone's life was saved, Paul could have demanded special treatment, but he's out there working and serving. I, he, I need somebody to hear this. It is in the time that you are working and serving that a crisis will show up in your life. Do I have any witnesses on this line that can testify? You can be out there doing good, trying to help others. That's what Paul was doing. He was simply trying to make a fire to help others to warm up. And watch this. And while you are trying to warm up others, you find yourself in a crisis. We, we often seem to believe that faithful service to God is some kind of a shield against trouble in our lives. <laughs> but that's the biggest joke ever been told. If you ask Job, he will tell you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would tell you. Daniel will tell you. Elijah would tell you. Jeremiah will tell you. The disciples will tell you. Even Jesus will tell you that troubles are a part of everyone's life. There's crisis in everybody's life. And when trouble comes, they can derail our faith. But somebody needs to hear me today that you have to have faith even in the midst of frustration. Would you help me and type that in the text? I have faith even in frustration. We, we, we want to know, how do we hold on to God when snakes are holding on to us? Well, I'm glad you asked me. You need to understand to do like Paul did and put your faith in the promises of the Lord. And believe him for the help that you need. Somebody needs to hear me. In your times of trouble, you have some very precious promises. In Hebrews 13 and 5, you have the promise of his presence. In 1 Corinthians 15 and 57, you have the promise of his victory. In Romans 8 and 28, you have the promise of his purpose on his and his plans. In Ephesians 3 and 20, you have the promise of his power. I need somebody to hear me today. He will move heaven and earth to meet your needs. You just have to shake off that snake of crisis. Elijah shook off crisis. Joshua shook off crisis. Moses shook off crisis. The disciples shook off crisis. Mary and Martha shook crisis off. Jairus shook off a crisis. Is there anybody on this line that can testify with me? Even in a crisis, Christ is. The writer puts it this way. He is a very present help in times of trouble. Shake off the crisis and keep on serving Christ. Second snake you got to shake off. Shake off the snake of criticism. First one is the snake of crisis. Second, there's the snake of criticism. You'll find that in Acts 28 verse 4, as soon as Paul is bitten by the snake, the people around him began to criticize him. They were very superstitious people. And they assumed that for a viper to bite Paul, Paul must have done some evil in his life. But how many of you can testify with me that bad things do happen to good people? In their view, he was being punished because he was a wicked man. Their God of the sea, Neptune, was not able to take him. But Nemesis, the God who's in charge of this dispensing justice would get him. Watch this. They got the God of the sea, Neptune. They got the God of justice, Nemesis. But Paul had the God Almighty on his side. You know what's amazing? People are often so quick to criticize when they don't understand what they see or hear. Some of you have been the object of the criticism of others. But you're not alone because here's the thing. Some of the greatest people who ever lived have been criticized by others. Israel criticized Moses for everything that went wrong. They murmured that they were hungry. They were thirsty. They were tired. Even Jesus faced 
the criticism of his enemies when they called him a blasphemer, according to Matthew 9 and 3. He was even accused of being of the league of Satan in Matthew 9 and 34. And if you are not careful, the criticism that you face from others will cause you to become defeated. There are times when you and I deserve the criticism we receive. There are times when we are we are wrong. There are times when we need to be shown the error of our ways. But then there are times when we are trying to do our best and still we are criticized, misunderstood, and misrepresented. Can I get a witness today? Because if you're not careful, criticism will make you want to give up and quit. There are people who pride themselves in being the killjoy. There are some people that can find everything wrong with Henry, but they never see anything wrong with themselves. And the last time I checked, Paul said, before you have communion, every man ought to examine themselves. Can I ask you a question? Can you stand up off of, under the criticism that you prescribe for other people's lives? You got to be very careful, my brothers and sisters, because too often, many of us, we generate a criticism that is brutal, one that is based on works and not on grace. We, we dispense a criticism that just because things are not going right in somebody's life, that God must be mad with them or God must be punishing them or God must be took his hand off of them so Satan can put a whipping on them. But I stopped by to tell somebody today that you have to bury that mindset and you got to recognize that in this life, you will have tribulation. In this life, you will have trepidation. But in this life, you have a treasure. That treasure is a relationship with God that even though you are bitten by the snakes, you can shake off criticism. I, I want you to understand today when I preach, there's some who say you preach too long. Then there's some who say you preach too short. You talk too much. You don't look right. You don't speak right. But here's the thing that I found out. The folks that criticize you ain't doing nothing their own self. So what do you do when you face criticism? Well, if you are like Moses or Joshua, you continue to faithfully lead the people. If you're like Jesus, you go die on a cross. If you're wise, you will consider the source of the criticism. Listen to me. Consider their source. Somebody need to type that in the text. Consider the source. Listen. I don't mind my ministry being criticized by somebody who's doing better than me. But I pay no mind to folks who criticize it that's doing worse than me. You can't criticize my ministry when you are preaching from your living room every Sunday and you're being streamed by a telephone when we have the latest state-of-the-art equipment. Because here's the thing. Visionaries don't play catch up. Visionaries are always ahead of the game. Consider the source. How can a person that has never accomplished anything in their life be the person that's your biggest critic? Can I help somebody today? This afternoon, there's a snake that's trying to bite you with criticism, but I want you to know what you have survived, they would have lost their mind. My brothers and sisters, I stopped by to tell you some people deserve to be listened to, but the majority of people who criticize you don't deserve the time of day. If you are wise, you will get your eyes off your critics and focus on Jesus. Shake off the snake of criticism and look onto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. First, I told you, you need to shake off the snake of crisis. Second, shake off the snake of criticism. Then my closing point, shake off the snake of cynicism. Verse six is where we find the cynicism. These people were sitting there watching Paul, waiting for him to swell up, fall down, and die. Y'all didn't hear me. They expected him to swell up, fall and die. 
Ooh, I, I need to say that again for somebody. Somebody on this line, there are some cynical folk that are watching you because they're waiting for you to swell up, fall down, and die. They're saying nothing good is going to come of this situation. How many of you in this chat today have been the obstacle? How many of you in this chat have had the have the have the obstacle of cynical words spoken over your life? You'll never make it. That church thing ain't going to last. You're going to fail. You're going to fall. This ain't for real. What's the use? You might as well quit. Have you ever had folk that are cynical? Why would you go to that school? You know you're not that smart. Why would you try to pastor that church? You know you don't have the right, the right training, the right degree. Come on, let me get somebody up close. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Cynical folks see the glass half empty. They think about what's missing. Cynical folks have a lot to say, but they don't have the final say so. Oh, I don't know if anybody's excited, but I'm glad I know who has the final say so. Do I have anybody in this line can testify? I've been bitten by some snakes. I should have been dead. I could have been dead sleeping in my grave, but because I know who had the final say so, he told death to sit back and behave. Do I have a witness on this line that can testify with me that weed could have drove you cuckoo, that that drink, that drink could have taken you out, that, that, that conspiracy could have put you behind bars. But the truth is, you know who has the final say so. Shake off the vipers of cynicism. Prove your doubters wrong. How do you prove them wrong? By being faithful and obedient to the word and the will of God. You got to have an attitude. Here's the attitude. The attitude is I will let nothing separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Nobody but you will determine the quality and the length of your service to the Lord. There's not a critic. There's not a crisis. There's not a cynic that can drive you from God unless you allow them to. Shake off the snake of crisis. Shake off the snake of criticism. Shake off the snake of cynicism. Are some vipers trying to attach themselves to your lives? Can you identify the vipers? I'll tell you how you identify them. Watch what they do and not just what they say. Can I just share this with y'all? The viper was there. It was cold. It was rainy. He was very lethargic, but he was there. Do you notice when he attacked? He attacked when the atmosphere started to get warm. I want to help five of y'all. Can I help five of y'all? Well, I helped six, if you'll be honest with me today. The truth is that the viper in your life is only trying to attach to you because you're getting warm. You're headed somewhere. God is about to do a great thing in you, through you, and with you. But let me do you a little advice. Be careful of the vipers. And when they try to attack, shake them off. I, I wish somebody would hear me today. Would you help me today? Would you help me today? Just write in the chat. Shake it off. Just when that viper attacks you, he, he going to do some damage, but shake him off. You know why? Because I've come too far of where I started from. And I don't believe he's brought me this far just to leave me. Would you do me a favor? Whatever you're dealing with today, whatever you're wrestling with today, do not 
find yourself prey to the vipers. Because vipers are always trying to see how they can discourage, trap, trick, and kill you. But God will give you the strength, the knowledge, the discernment to shake it off. If you were blessed by this word today, drop me a word in the chat. I would love to hear from you. And I would love to encourage you with these simple words. Shake off crisis. Shake off critics. Shake off cynics. Because God has work for you to do. No demon in hell. No, no viper laying in wait can come between you and your full potential in God. I hope this midday man was a blessing to you. God bless you. And remember, shake it off. Bye.